This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing.
under the rising Japanese sun at 5.30 in the morning. We are at Tsukuba for round four of the season 17 MX-5 World Championship. You can see all the simulated Mazda action. Green flag to victory lane. Live as it happens right here on the Global Sim Racing Channel via the iRacing Esports Network. Hello and welcome to the Sim Sport News Countdown to Green. Over the next 15 minutes, GSRC will bring you all the storylines, all the stats and facts you'll need to appreciate the MWT round four event that we're going to have here immediately following this pre-race show. And here to do it all is Johan Vandebelt joining me, Adam Young, to bring you our view of today's action. Joe Peak is in the director booth, and he, of course, he's using cameras, as always, provided by the one and only W. Beard. Johan, it is a tight track here, lots of corners. There's not a lot of time to rest. If anybody's familiar with Tsukuba, you want to tell us a little bit about this facility? Absolutely, Adam. Today we visit Tsukuba, located a small 40 kilometers from Tokyo and the newest road circuit on iRacing. This venue was completed in 1970. It features two different layouts, a small and twisty course called 1000 and a bigger track named 2000. And on the latter, we will see the Mazda MX-5 today. Now, if you visit a racing event at Tsukuba, chances are that you're going to visit a time attack competition. This type of motor racing is extremely popular in Japan and especially here at this track. The other racing categories visit this 2km track as well, like open wheelers, sports cars and motorcycles. Tsukuba is what I would call, Adam, a typical Mickey Mouse circuit. It has a lot of short straights followed by karting style hairpins. Three things will be essential here, taking as much speed as possible out of corners, being very consistent and strong under braking, and equally smooth and decisive while handling traffic. The qualifying will be important as well as overtaking around the Japanese track will be harder than at other tracks in the MWT series. But before we see how the grid will line up, let's take a lap first around Tsukuba in the Mazda MX-5. All right, we've got Johan Vandenbelt in the GSRC MX-5, so let's do a lap around Tsukuba. Down to turn one, this is likely going to be the best place to make a pass. Everywhere else has its downsides and requires big mistakes to make work. With this being a hairpin, you'll want to square off the exit, and that brings us through the weaving bit of three and four. It forces you into something of an awkward entry into five, which is why, despite being a hairpin, it's really tough to execute an overtake here. There's lots of banking, so use that to your advantage. Immediately, you've got to switch sides to set up for seven. This corner looks simple from the outside of the car, but it tends to be deceptively tough to nail, as well as carry your speed through. Eight and nine are simple, flat-out kinks that you sort of round out to make one long turn. And then, you hit eleven. This last hairpin is unique in the way it's tighter on entry and then slowly opens up on the exit. It makes getting the power down as soon as possible one of the more critical aspects of this track. And while it does dump you onto the longest acceleration zone down towards turn 12, it really doesn't offer you a good passing opportunity. There's very little braking into this turn because of how fast and long it is. Ideally, you want to set yourself up to get a better run onto the front stretch so that you can go on the attack back into the first corner. But hopefully you've now finished a lap around Sakuba. They come hard, they come quickly, and the drivers have to do 43 of these laps today at Sakuba. Now, before we go to the points, remember that the Countdown to Green is sponsored by SimSport News. SimSport News is one of the leading sim racing news websites that covers all broadcasted series on iRacing, and it's run by Jacob Tops and Louise Emerton. Not just reporting, these guys also race at SimSport News Racing competes in many official top-level iRacing series. For more information, visit simsportnews.com. And of course, the, the points that Johan brought up just a second ago. Well, hey, let's go ahead and take a look at the pro driver standings out there. And, well, right at the top of the line is Jaume Dalmasas Torres. He's got eight lead over Sonny Kinch and they're both up a spot each and that's because Marcelo Pagnan he ended up dropping down two spots down to third in the nine, nine points back. Now keep in mind in this series they have the benefit of three dropped races so 
that first through third gap right there, that's pretty much nothing at this stage in the game. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see the standings flip around a little bit more. Uh, Gianni uh, Cantillier, uh from Belgium, he is down 24 points. And I got to looking. I do not see him on the uh, lineup here so far today. And uh, Jan Francois Pinot, uh, he's down 47 points in fifth position. So let's move over to the AM standings with Johan. Yeah, in that championship, it is still Steph Fain of leading after finishing P2 last time around at Bathurst. Bjorn Force was the only driver able to finish ahead of him in this race. And he beat his northern neighbor at Bathurst by only 15 thousandths of a second. Now, that race, I think, was indicative of the M championship. These two drivers seem almost impossible to separate from each other. Let's see if it's the same story here at Sakuba. Behind them, Derek Holland is doing his best, best to catch up to the end leaders, but finishing P3 in Australia ended up to be mostly damage limitation. He's fending off Jeroen Oersum and Michael Wardman for a podium in the end category. Two drivers that have both finished in the top 10 at Bathurst and really profited from staying out of the melee going up the hill. And of course, going on behind you right now, we do have qualifying under the way. They got about eight minutes left to go here. And of course, they do get two laps out there here for today. We'll get up, caught up on those times here in just a minute. But the event details here for today in the MX-5 World Tour, uh, of course, we talked about this is season 17. This is also round four of 11. And they're going to go around for 43 laps here for today. Now, uh, 43 laps, these guys are setting times uh, a little bit over a minute, so expect probably about 45 uh, minutes or so of race action here this afternoon well actually i should say this morning it's 5 30 in the morning here in zucuba and setups we are running the open setups here and we can guarantee at least one pit stop out there here for this afternoon as these cars are restricted with 30 percent fuel and there is no instant cap but don't forget that these guys, they, they have a, a, a different points uh, bonus system for miles per instant. So it pays to make sure that you don't have to worry about those incidents. So with that, we also want to remind you, hey, you know, if you haven't done so yet, you can join the iRacing community and compete online against thousands of players in the most realistic racing simulation. The best of the best in their iRacing World Championships, as well as many top private leagues like the one you're watching right now, are showcased right here on the iRacing Esports Network. GSRC is proud to be a part of the IESN stable of broadcasters. Of course, up here in the GSRC booth, it's, it's pretty comfortable. It's air-conditioned and everything else, and outside, it's not too bad either. How's that weather looking out there right now, Johan? Well, it's still an early morning, 90 degrees Celsius on track, 18 degrees Celsius ambient temperature. You can see it there, just uh, 65, 66 degrees Fahrenheit out there. You can see on screen Gaume de Massa Torres. He's on pole position. He was the quickest in practice in his second qualifying lap. He doesn't go quicker as he was during his first lap, but he is clear by almost one and a half, or exactly one and a half tenth of a second from Sonny Kenshin. It looks like the Spanish driver once again, Adam, is on top. Yeah, and, and looking at the gaps between the guys here for, so far, uh, it, it, I mean, that's actually, he laid down probably the biggest gap between him and Sonny Kanchin that I've seen, and that between P1 and P2. Everybody else here seems to be only separated by maybe a couple hundreds, maybe a couple thousands of a second. So the racing, it, it, it qualifies in the indication, and practices in the indication of uh, Johan. It's going to be very tight out there for today, where uh, hundreds and tenths of a second are going to matter per lap. Absolutely. On screen at the moment, we see Kip Stevens. He is, unfortunately for him, the last pro driver in the field at the moment. He's P10 overall, P9 in the pro category. Uh, but like you mentioned, Adam, those, those gaps between the drivers are so incredibly small. If Kip Stevens was only one tenth of a second quicker in qualifying, he would have gained another uh, position. Two tenths of a second, it would have been two extra positions. So it's very close uh, in the field for sure. Robert Willicha is one of the drivers that's still out for his second qualifying attempt. He has a 1024 his first time around. With that, he is currently, I think, P5 in the amateur category. He's coming across the very long, very difficult turn 12. Coming across the line, a 1024 stays a 1024. He doesn't improve his lap time. Same what we saw earlier with Jaume de Mazas Torres. So it seems like that first lap in these cold weather conditions is really the time uh, where you can get a good lap time. And of course, that's just going to make that all-important run down to turn one off the standing start all that much more important as these guys are going to be fighting for every little bit of ground they can get on the first lap. 
And of course, hey, that's going to mean some pretty and tight, intense racing out there. In fact, already looking at Kip Stevens just wheeling this thing around. Got Joe McDonald on the screen right now. So he's trying to improve his lap time a little bit. That last lap there uh, got down to a, a minute two. And there, oh, well, here's Kip Stevens. Yeah, Kip Stevens, we still see on track. There's not a lot of drivers still on track. Kip Stevens actually parks it. Uh, Robert Wieliga, I think, is the only driver still turning laps. That's actually quite smart from Robert Wieliga, I have to say, because we already mentioned in the, in the beginning of this broadcast, this race is actually being run in morning conditions. In the sim, it's currently 36 minutes uh, past five in the morning. The sun is just rising. Because of this, the drivers really have to deal with some changing weather conditions, especially the track temperature that's well still the 66 uh, degrees Fahrenheit that we just saw uh, when qualifying was started but it's a lot warmer than it was when uh, practice started around an hour ago when we are one hour from now and in the middle in the final stages of the race it will be a whole deal warmer again so these uh, drivers like Robert Wienga are out there trying to get as much track time in to just get used to those track conditions and see how it develops when the sun finally rises here in Japan yeah, that, that's something worth mentioning there, Johan, is the fact that these guys, when they started practice here earlier on, it was dark. The headlights were on, the vehicles, uh, you know, you don't you don't see these Mazdas in, in iRacing running around very often with just the headlights on, but that's exactly <laughs> what they were doing. Um, and, you know, but the, the track, of course, was completely cool at then. And you're right, you get about another hour down the road here toward the end of this race, the sun will be a little bit higher in the sky. We might actually start to see these guys slipping and sliding, but here early on, the car at least looking at the balance of them and everything else seemed very well hooked up. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think personally, whenever I drive the MX-5, I, I love these conditions, these cool conditions. Usually you always had them when you had a, a, a cloud cover hanging above the track. Nowadays, you also have them in morning conditions when the sun is almost setting. But this is really when the MX-5 always shines, I felt. You have a lot of grip uh, and, and that really allows you to, to put the throttle down as, as well, finitely as you want almost. And you know that the track rubber will just stick to it. You get the most traction that you uh, that you kind of can have. Robert Wieliga, we're still looking at him. Like I said, there's not a lot of drivers out there at the moment. Joe McDonald is, uh, or was it actually <laughs> practicing a little um, uh, practice start in the pit lane just now? Because you also just mentioned, Adam, the, the, the start of the race. You, you have such a short rundown towards the first corner where it will be very important. And that rundown of well, what would it be, around 300 meters, would be incredibly important because after turn one, I would have difficulty finding a, another good position where you can overtake your rifles. It, it will be really difficult to overtake here. It will. I mean, it, it's it's so tight. It's it's twisty. I mean, we're we're sticking twelve corners here into one point, you know, two seven months, and that that gets to be a lot of action, a very short distance out there. And we do have a couple cars that are sitting on pit road, but. They have gone past the point where even if they started to roll again, they would not be able to get a lap time in. So I think we're safe to go ahead and take a look at that starting grid out there here for this afternoon. I keep saying this afternoon. It's because it looks like the sun's up, but it's actually still 540 in the morning. So let's go ahead and go over that Husqvarna starting grid starting on the pole here for today. We've got Jaume Dalmasas Torres. Alongside him will be Sonny Kanchin. On row two, we can find Christoph Sanchez. He had a, a qualifying time four tenths behind the pole sitter. He's being flanked by Nick Thiessen. Peter Van Gool out there in fifth, making up row three. Alongside him will be Jean-Francois Pinot. He's in sixth position. Mike Nicolas Berger starts the race in P7. He's being flanked by Stefan van Opstal in P8. Row five is going to belong to Jordi Fike. Alongside him will be Kip Stevens. P11 is the second amateur driver, Bjorn de Force. He starts just in front of Michael Wartman. Then we've got Derek Holland, followed by Robert Minlinga. P15 is Maurice Wertz. He's being flanked by another Benelux driver, Jeroen Oersem. And the last driver on the grid, P17, Joe McDonald. All right, so. We're waiting for the cars to finish gridding up here. They're in the process of doing so. Then we can get 43 laps of action 
in for today. As we mentioned, that uh, with these guys running lap times, anywhere between about a minute and a minute five seconds, uh, I, I anticipate once the race gets going, once the track heats up a little bit, uh, th this race should probably go in the neighborhood of about 45 minutes long. And that's 45 minutes to try to do whatever you can do on a tight, twisting track that they've got to contend with out there here for today. Johan, any final thoughts before we get going? I'm uh, just looking with amazement at Peter van Gool. I said that Björn de Force was the second amateur driver it's because Peter van Gool, all the way up in P5, he grabbed the pole position in the M class with a blistering time. He's half a second away from the rest of the M drivers. Watch for him because he's going to throw a wrench in the mix for a lot of pro drivers. All right, so just waiting until they get the lights go to go off, and then we'll be going racing here at Zukuba in Japan. And once again, that 300-meter run up to turn one might be where most of the action takes place out there, at least in the early stages of this race. Very tight, very twisting track here. 12 turns of 1.27 miles. And here we go. Green track is green tires are smoked up we are away in japan torres gets a great launch he's gonna have to turn one. Oh, looking at that that was christoph sanchez and yeah. then christoph sanchez get together right off the bat christoph sanchez trying to work his way back in line he's gonna drive straight off the track there going into turn three yeah we'll, we'll come back to it here in just a minute but already, uh, Sonny Kanch is going to have a touch of damage on the side of his MX-5. Doesn't seem to be affecting him hardly at all here. Nick Deason, though, he's going to take over third position. And then Peter Van Cool, he's going to be in fifth, uh, excuse me, uh, fourth. And Nicholas Berger is going to be the one to take up fifth position. So that is your top five here as we head down the back straightaway here at Zakuba. The first run on this long, sleep, sweeping turn 12. And Torres is going to give himself his first, uh, the first lap here today, led as he takes a pretty good sizable lead for this track. Uh, a little bit over a second over Sonny Kanchin here to complete lap one. Yeah, not surprising. Sonny Kanchin got a whole uh, face full of Christoph Sanchez there in turn one. That will surely have brought some damage to his car. In the back of the field, everything has stretched out. There was a nice battle going on between Bjorn de Force and Kip Stevens as well, but that has settled out now as well with Bjorn de Force up to P8. Kip Stevens behind an amateur driver, uh, Johnny Feig as well. But it's mostly Bjorn de Force really making some, uh, some moves forward, trying to follow Peter van Gogh, who had a great start from P5. He's now driving in P4, the amateur driver. Torres still continues to extend his lead right now. Uh, probably the tightest battle uh, is probably going to be Nicholas Berger and Peter Van Gool uh, here for fourth and fifth positions. Uh, and then you've also got uh, Upstall and uh, Pinot. They're running right behind for sixth and seventh position here. You get a good run here going up the front straightaway. See if you can use a little bit of that draft. Uh, draft are probably really going to take really a hold in, in only two portions of this track here today. Uh, Johan front straightaway and, of course, that long back straightaway. But even then, uh, draft uh, probably not going to be as big as it could be on, say, uh, tracks like they just got done running at Bathurst, where you had two very long straightaways. Today, you don't have that. Absolutely. It, 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 the draft is there. You can feel it as a driver. It won't be enough probably to give yourself an opportunity to launch an overtake. But it will play an effect though, especially in that last corner. Because if you approach that corner with a bit of draft and more speed because of that, it's almost deceptive how much more speed you have. And it is very easy to break slightly too little because you're used to not having any draft there. And then overshooting that very long right-hander. I could see Robert Wimicha doing that last time around. He had to take a trip through the grass on the exit of turn 12. Kept it out of the wall, though. He's co uh, continuing his race. But watch out for drivers doing that. As you, you can see them here completely tracking out over the green Astro turf. If you just break a little bit too late, that's surely going to mean that you're having uh, a visit to the grass there. Uh, you can see on this battle for P3. Nick Thiessen is leading that. There's four other cars in that. Uh, battle Nicholas Berger, Peter van Gool, Stefan van Opsel, and Jean Fran Pedroit. Those five have completely separated themselves from Björn de Force. Björn de Force, however, is defending against Kip Stevens. Both drivers side by side as they come out of turn six. 
Yeah, and Nick Thiessen right now has a mirror full of Peter in that 420 car. And Peter right now, our highest running amateur driver, all the way up in P4. Next closest driver uh, for the amateurs is going to be uh, Bjorn uh, DeFore. She's back there in eighth position. And uh, Peter up here, he's looking like he might try to take a run and maybe a look here on Nick going down the back straight away and thinks better of it. He's going to stay right in line there. Overtaking course is going to be very hard here, but that is going to be one area where I expect to maybe see some passing coming off that long back straightaway into that sweeping uh, turn 12. It was exactly what we were talking about. He had all the draft he needed, but it was just slightly too short that straight to put this car side by side. He was right behind Nick Thiessen in front of him, but Nick didn't make any mistake, and that was all that Peter could hope for to uh, try a move. He's still in front of Nicholas Berger. Now let's go a little bit further down the field. P9 at the moment. Kip Stevens has found his way past Bjorn DeForest. So that means that Kip Stevens is loose. Uh, not, lo not longer stuck behind that M drive. And Bjorn DeForest is now holding up Jordi Fike behind him. Derek Holland isn't that far away from him either. So it seems like Bjorn DeForest was the cork on the bottle for Kip Stevens and Jordi Fike. But he at least released one drive. And Jordi Fike is trying to make that the second one very soon. And uh, it might be worth uh, going back up to the front of this field here just real quick. I want to point out that uh, Sonny Kanchin uh, starting to catch Torres. Now, that last lap was 599. Now it's back down to 677 as far as the gap. But keep in mind, that gap at the start of this race at the end of lap one was up over a second. So Sonny Kanchin very slowly... You know, kind of one of those, uh, uh, you know, two steps forward, one step back kind of thing. But it's still one step forward trying to catch Torres here for the race lead. So we'll have to keep on checking back in on this. But there are plenty of tight races in the back part of this field right now. Well, Jordi Fike having some problems. He dropped down quite a bit. He's now behind to Robert Wienicha there as well. Let's actually see what happened to him. It happened after he came out of the first corner, turn two. He had a horrible exit there. It almost looked like he had uh, a little bit of oversteer coming out of the corner. That's way too much oversteer. It almost looked like he was clearing a slowdown penalty there. And he got going again. No damage for him. He's driving behind Robert Wieringa. But that will hurt him. He was, of course, fighting with Björn de Force in front of him. This means that Björn de Force has no mirror full of cars in front of him or behind him. He can now focus on driving his own laps, maybe following Kip Stevens a little bit extending the gap to Derek Holland. And the battle for P3, that's really the battle that, that's being uh, very hardly fought at the moment. Nick Thiessen is still being followed quite closely by Peter van Gogh. But visually looking at this, Adam, Nicolas Berger, Van Opstal and, and Penoir, all those drivers are under a blanket. And it seems like every lap they pass the commentary booth, they seem closer and closer together. They do. They're definitely trying to run away and make their own little pack right here. They're doing a pretty good job of it. Uh, and that, that might be a situation there, too, uh, where if they start racing each other, maybe start trying to pass each other, that might allow the likes of Kip Stevens and uh, Bjorn DeForce to catch up. But as long as they keep uh, running nose to tail, they might not have the opportunity to be able to re-catch those guys is uh they're setting pretty good lap times right now too uh uh all those guys uh right in the low minute two range minute one range and uh oh so it looks like uh for a second there i thought peter uh, peter was gonna go ahead and take a look on nick but uh not quite there yet but it did jumble up that pack just a little bit if he jumped down, Jordi Fike just finished his overtaking maneuver on Robert Wieliga. Jordi Fike, we saw him being very loose out of turn two a few laps ago. He's trying to make up some positions. He got one of those positions back, so he's back to P12. Now trying to, down to close the gap to Maurice Vets. We're going to a replay of that overtaking maneuver here out of turn 12. He's setting himself up, trying to use the draft as much as possible of Robert Wieliga in front of him. And at the last moment, he just looks on the inside. Robert knows that he's coming. He leaves some space. Just hugs it tight on the hairpin of turn one and turn two. He gets by there. Back to P12 for Jordi. Ooh, actually gets punted on the exit of the uh, penultimate hairpin. Hard by Robert Wieliga. Spinning over the track, Jordi Fike is. What happened there? Because this was reminiscent of what happened a few laps ago. Uh, out of turn two, where he completely lost all traction. Robert Wieliga didn't anticipate it there. We go to a replay of what happened here from the chopper. You can see it from high above... The track look at that car in the middle of the track out of the corner it just seems like his engine died or something and robert wieliga 
cannot avoid him. Tries to, but punts him off the track. Really, Fike hits the wall there, has some damage. Oh, the sheriff! The sheriff is now relegated to P16. Very, very good job by the rest of those guys being able to avoid Jordy Fike there, but uh, significant damage on his Mazda. I have to see if it affects his handling, but it, you're you're right there, Johan, that something definitely seemed up with the with how dramatically he slowed down. Whether he wasn't able to get the power down, maybe he missed a shift or something like that coming out of that corner. Either way, though, the consequences were definitely not putting him uh you know putting him back at the last car on the lead lap really the uh, uh i am running last out of the car still running as uh, christoph sanchez has officially retired from the race here for today up front though let's recap up front here real quick uh torres uh still being chased right now by kanchen and uh this uh, keep in mind these two also had a crazy battle in the last few laps at Donington just a couple of races ago. I have to wonder if there's any love lost between these two for that. But Sonny Hanch should doing everything he can right now to keep uh, Torres in touch. Right now about seven tenths of a second, eight tenths of a second now on your screen to gap between those two. So still right there, but still not quite enough. Back to that battle there for third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh positions. That group that you can throw a blanket on, well, you can still throw a blanket on them. Running very much nose to tail. All just trying to keep in touch with each other. Nobody making any moves in that little bit of a pack right there. Going back behind these guys, you still got Kip Stevens. Kip Stevens uh, kind of running all by his lonesome right now. Uh, eighth position. He's got a good gap in front of him before he would catch uh, Pinot. And then going back another spot, a big gap between him and Bjorn DeForsch. As DeForsch now uh, has a mirror full of Derek Holland there, Johan. Yeah, some battles that we see all shaping up. All the, the battles basically seem to stretch out a little bit, apart from the big five-car battle that we have for P3. Um, now, the racing is breaking up a little bit, so maybe we can see what happened exactly in lap one between Sonic Kenshin and uh, Christoph Sanchez. There was, of course, a hard hit that, uh, well, basically meant the end of the race for Christoph Sanchez. We can see it here at the beginning of the race. The red car on the inside, that's Sonic Kenshin. The black and white car there, just on the second row, that's Christoph Sanchez. Now look at Christoph Sanchez uh, when the race starts. He actually has a beautiful start. Immediately gets it alongside Sonny Kenshin, who didn't get away so quickly. Now, once it approached turn one, it almost seems like Christoph steered in a little bit earlier, uh, or Sonny Kenshin went a little bit, steered in a little bit later than Christoph expected. One hit, and especially that second hit, that destroyed the suspension of Christoph Sanchez. And you can see it here, trying to avoid the other cars. He has no choice but to end his race in the wall so a very heavy hit very uh, bad news of course for Christoph Sanchez who had a great qualifying started the race in P3 the double contact with Sonny Kenshin meant that his race is over now Sonny Kenshin will have a little bit of uh, damage I imagine because of that Adam but he's still close to Jaume Damasas Torres and that's great news for Sonny Kenshin because the draft I imagine is helping him stay close to the Spaniards now not only is he staying close to the Spaniards because he's in the draft he will be able to save a marginal amount of fuel and once those drafts Drivers will come in for the pit stop. That is going to pay dividends for the Australian. And every little bit you can save right there means, hey, not much about more that you have to put in in order to finish this race out. Again, we are guaranteed at least one pit stop here today. These cars are limited on fuel, even despite the open setups. They're limited to 30% fuel. So we will see a pit stop, pit stop at some point during the festivities here today still looking uh going back to this battle here uh di between Derek Holland and Bjorn de Forge. I mean Bjorn is doing everything he can uh to hold off Derek Holland right now I really think that, that, that like those guys up there I think right now are just content running nose to tail but I think Derek Holland he really wants to get that ninth position away from Bjorn here and uh, keeps looking for ways to try to get around it, but overtaking here so tough, Johan. Absolutely, and this is a very interesting battle in the multiple ways. This, of course, is the battle for P2 in the M category here, but it's kind of also the battle for P2 in the M Championship. Brian Force is P2 there, Derek Holland is P3 there. With the absence of Steph Fainoff today, I wouldn't be surprised if both these drivers can 
a move of one position in that championship. So, in a way, this is maybe for the lead there as well. Going through turn 12 last time around, Derek Holland seems to lose a little bit of touch to Björn de Force, but like I mentioned in the battle between Sonny Kenshin and Jaume uh, Torres as well, the draft is helping the driver that's following at least to stay close uh, and give them a little opportunity to get by. Now, in the meantime, the other M driver in front of them, Peter van Gogh, he is losing connection to Nick Thiessen. It seems like his tires are burning up a little bit. The track, well, it's still not warm. It's 20 degrees Celsius, one degree warmer than it was in qualifying, but he is losing connection with P3 in the race. Now, Nicolas Berg and jean Frappenois, they are seeing that and they want to fight uh, away past Peter van Gogh as soon as they can. Because if they don't, they are going to lose connection to Nick Thiessen as well. And that's already starting to happen there as that gap between them is now up to about, I believe, uh, six, seven tenths of a second. So those guys are starting to get a little hungry behind them. They're going to have to try to move up. As, uh, it looks like we might have our first taker on pit road here, uh, Johan. Yeah, Kip Stevens is the first one heading in pit lane for a pit stop. Now, this is very early in the race. You can see it left 15, well, basically one third of the race. So he started the race with uh, well, the attention to stop early. He, of course, was driving in no man's land. That didn't help him. He put in some new tires, some left side tires, put some fuel in. It takes both tires, both sides. That may be a mistake from Kip Stevens, I imagine, Adam. Usually we see drivers only taking tires on one side of the car. Kip ops for both, both sides. And one thing that will be interesting is he's coming out of the pits now all by his lonesome. While meantime, Damasas Torres is coming over the start finish line. You can see it there on top of the screen, the ye little ye uh, yellow car. And that will be a little bit of traffic. And that can be a huge factor, Adam, in a battle with Sonny Kenshin once they have to fight their way past Kip Stevens. Yeah, and you can see in the last few laps, Sonny Kanchin has gotten right up underneath the rear deck lid now of Torres. He's right there. And these two, once again, they've come together in the past. I mean, they're not shy about trying to make contact to get around each other. Granted, those were in the later stages of the race. Still got plenty of time here for today. But there is a history there, so we'll be wanting to watch this carefully as they come up on Kip Stevens. And I was thinking about Kip Stevens there, uh, Johan, and, uh, and, and he had... Even though Bjorn DeForge and uh, Derek Holland were racing really hard, they were catching Kip Stevens. So I have to think that maybe that had something to do with uh, with him wanting to come in early. As we see two more takers coming off pit road, leaders hit the front straight away. And Kip Stevens just let the two leaders by on the back straight. Now this will have hurt Kip Stevens quite a bit. Uh, because he had to basically break at one of the quickest parts of the track. Now, at the same time, John McDonald and Jeroen Oersen went in for their pit stop. You could see that on screen, they both passed Kip Stevens in the pit stop. So that means that the Belgian completely fell down the order. He was driving around P8, P9. Now, after his pit stop, I think he will be P16 on the, in the field. So a horrible uh, pit stop for Kip Stevens, who now has to fight by all the uh, amateur drivers to get back where he was. Well, that battle for the lead does continue. Torres out in front of Kanchin. See how the uh, battle for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and all those positions is going here. Looks like uh, Peter Van Gogh here has uh, been able to go ahead and, uh, it's, he, it, I, I like to use this term, he stopped the bleeding. He stopped the bleeding a time to Nick Thiessen. In fact, I think gained back a little bit here. So that pack's starting to come back together again. Yeah, and I hope for Peter that he can keep this up because if he loses the draft with Nick Thiessen, that will really uh, hurt him in that race with Nicolas Berger, Jean Frappenois, and Stefan van Opsel. Now remember that Peter well, is of course racing these guys, but he is of course leading as well in the amateur category this race. He's having a great run out here in Tsukuba. Now, this is a very tight battle, but I have to say, you mentioned it just a few moments ago, Adam, the battle for the lead is also very tight. The Massa Torres, Sonny Kenshin, there's only four tenths of a second between the two. Now, last time around, it was Sonny Kenshin winning two tenths of a second on the Spaniard. I'm actually wondering, are these drivers just going to stay out there, turn laps until they well, basically run their tank dry? Or are they going to throw some strategy in the mix, make a pit stop soon, 
and see if they can beat the other driver, leapfrog the other driver going like that. Now, of course, Jeroen Oersem and John McDonald, you might see two cars in front of them appear sometimes. They will be lapped soon as well. Another car is joining that battle. Maurice Wurst just came out for his first and only pit stop, hopefully. Ooh, is that Thomas Sestorius makes a little mistake there in turn two. Very late on the break, actually has to take an off-track penalty there on the exit. That really shows that the Spaniard is under pressure by Sonny Kenshin, I would say, Adam. Yeah, that absolutely under pressure. You know, I'm, I'm impressed by Kip Stevens here. Uh, he is uh, he's keeping pace with these leaders. Oh, it's Sonny Kenshin actually loses traction a little bit there. Slides up the track. He has to catch it. Kip Stevens has to get off the gas, keep from getting into him. But that's going to cost him a ton of time to your leader, Torres. is uh, He's going to fall back a couple of tenths of a second easy on that one. Let's go back quickly to the battle for P3 because you guys remember that it was a five-car battle. Well, it has well, become a four-car battle a little bit. Stefan van Opstel has made a mistake last lap around. And look at the gap between him and Jean Frappeneau in front of him. It has grown to over a second. The Belgian really has to button it at the moment if he wants to close down the gap once again. Make it a five-car train. He has to burn a little bit extra fuel now to close down the gap to his rivals in front. Button it as well has to do Sonny Kenshin because the gap between him and the Massa Torres has grown also to over a second. We saw this at the beginning of the race as well, Adam, when the gap was over a second. And that time around, Sonny Kenshin managed to close it. But with some traffic involved now as well, Torres is in a great uh, place to, to find, finally, once and for all, break the draft to the driver behind him and really start to dominate this race here at Sukuba. Let's see, but his pit stop choices here are going to be key on that as he is coming up on la on traffic here. And the traffic that he's coming up on, uh, they're fighting for position. And they may, uh, I mean, I'm sure they'll be current, kind of courteous to the leader, but it's not going to be as easy as it was with Kip Stevens, who just moved over and let him go by. So uh, we'll have to see when he decides to come in and if uh, that lap traffic he's coming up on is going to play a role in that decision. Let's go to another battle between Björn de Force and Derek Holland. That's another battle that we haven't looked out for, uh, at for a little while. That's, of course, the battle for P8 overall and P2 in the M category. Björn de Force seems like he has broken down the gap uh, or made a little gap to Derek Holland. You can see it on screen, six tenths of a second. And with the pit stops approaching, this is the time of the race where you really want to distance yourself on track from your opponent. So uh, you can really make a difference once both of you come in. And this battle is still going on hard, as I said, for podium position in the M-Class. Still tight racing out there. You see it there on your screen. There's still the big battle there going on from third place on back. That's tight. The only t battle that it seems like it has loosened up over the last couple of laps has been for that lead after we saw Sonny Kenshin's mistake just, just a little while ago. And Torres, you're right, he's starting to stretch out that a little bit more. That's another two tenths of a second, up to 1.3 seconds the difference between him and Sonny Kanchin. So, but here comes that lap traffic. You see them on your screen now. Those three cars in front of the yellow car. The yellow car is Taurus. The three cars in front of him. Those are all lap cars he's coming up on. Guys that have already made their pit stop. And they are fighting for position right now. So that's going to be interesting to see if he, how much he's going to get held up here, if any. Starting to see a few more takers on pit road. So... Yeah, my We'll see if that plays a role once again in Torres' decision about when he might try to come down to take his fuel. Yeah, Michael Warburton and Robert Wieliger are coming in the pits, but I would like to watch what Torres is doing with that lap traffic because that's going to play a very big role in the lead of the race. The gap between him and Sonic Kenshin has grown to 1.4 seconds, mostly because of a mistake of Sonic Kenshin last time around. Damas Torres finds his way past you, the pink car of Jeroen Ursum. Well, that's one car in the books, one car between him and Kenshin as well. The gap actually has grown by one tenth of a second, even though he had to pass some lap traffic. Thomas Astorius has to punch up a little bit there, trying to avoid Joe McDonald. Now, this part of the racetrack is not where you want to meet traffic. This, this twisty set of corners, almost a, a lazy chicane, uh, a lot of hairpins. Joe McDonald gives him a lot of space, though. Joe McDonald actually goes side by side with Jeroen Hoosen because of that. And that might hurt Sonny Kenshin in his quest to, to get by coming out of the infield section now going to the uh, penultimate hair 
Pain Torres is chasing down, uh, who is that? That's Maurice Words in front of him. It's Joe McDonald and Jeroen Oersen once again go side by side. And if they stay like that, Sonny Kenshin doesn't have a, a way to pass them. As they go, reach the back straight. Sonny Kenshin is closing down the gap to the drivers in front of him. The gap between him and Damas Torres is 1.36. Yeah, great and, choice. And, and, and I was just thinking that, that that's the perfect time for Sonny Kenshin to go ahead and try to come down pit road before he gets held up too much by those guys and now i would not be surprised to see torres try to come in here this next lap but we'll see but sunny kitchen on pit road let's see what he does as far as tires and everything else here obviously he has to take fuel that's a given let's see if the side of the car goes up and he gets any kind of fresh new rubber out there as well okay so we see at least left sides we saw uh, kip stevens earlier take both sides i think a lot of these guys might be taking both sides here today uh but nope uh, he's going to take just the lefts back on the track, and here he goes. So uh, we'll see what uh, Torres does here next. I imagine he'll be coming down pit road here in the next lap or two. Yeah, let's see what he does. Tor Torres is in meantime has found his way past Maurice Wirtz as well. So there's three drivers that he has overtaken so far. In the meantime, Kip Stevens, he was, of course, last after his disastrous pit stop. He has found his way past Jeroen Oersum. So that's one position game for Kip Stevens as the Master Torres stays out for another lap. He, of course, had 1.4 seconds uh, advantage to Sonny Kenshin. And with clear air in front of him, there's not really a reason for Torres to make a pit stop now. He just has to stay there, compare his lap times while driving with Sonny Kenshin and make sure that the gap between those two drivers doesn't drop down quickly. Derek Holland and Bjorn de Force are also making their pit stop. That's the battle for P8. It'll be bested once those drivers come out uh, after they refuel the car. Well, I've been watching the, uh, the other battle from, uh, well, now second on back in... I've uh, been uh, watching uh, Peter Van Gogh here the last little bit. He's been all over Nick Thiessen, and I'm wondering if maybe he might try to make a move. But now, as I said that, of course, he's going to fall back just a touch. But just a couple of corners ago, he was right there and actually taking a peek. But now he's got to worry about fending off uh, Nicholas Berger. Nicholas Berger back there looking like he might try to do something. Heading down that long straightaway now. Well, long by comparison compared to the rest of the circuit here. The circuit's about a mile and uh, 1.3 miles in length. We see uh, Jan Frank uh, no and uh, up still coming down pit road here as Berger He's going to be able to take a peek on the inside of Peter Van Gogh here going into turn one. Is he be able to do anything with it? Gool steps out just a touch. Car slides just a little bit. And that's going to give Nicholas Berger third position. And, and great. Uh, Nick Thiessen, I think, says thank you for doing that and uh, separating me a little bit. Absolutely. Textbook maneuver from Bergen there. Basically, the only maneuver that you kind of can do on this track, just follow him as close as possible through turn 12. Uh, use all the draft on that short rundown towards the next corner and just very decisively take a look on the inside brake later. And if the corner goes 180 degrees to the right, that is all she wrote. So there's one position gained for Nicolas Berger. He now proficiently puts himself on the podium position, but of course he still has to make a pit stop before the race is over. Now it looks like this, no, oh, selling a, a little dummy Nick Thiessen is, trying to force Nicolas Berger to make a pit stop. Peter van Gogh behind him does opt in to make a pit stop. Now let's actually see where he comes out compared to some of the rivals that he was fighting with. Mainly Stefan van Opsal and jean franc Penois. The gap between those two drivers, if we can focus on Penois and van Opsal a little bit, uh, has actually grown with quite a bit oh. at the moment. There's over... Oh. Sorry, Nicolas Berger, he just threw it into turn one there. Almost spun it around on him. Big save by Berger. And only oh, sure, a couple tens of That's Jean Frappenard putting it in the wall. Oh. He was putting too much effort trying to close down the gap to the drivers in front. Uh, not, no, not that. He was breaking on the grass on the approach to the final corner. Lost connect, uh, lost grip because of that. Slight touch with the wall. That will have hurt his nose. And in the meantime, we're looking at Peter van Gogh. Has he found his way by Stefan van Opsel? He has not found his way by Stefan van Opsel. Stefan could save a lot of fuel in the step before that. That has helped him. We go to a replay here of, Ste of Jean Frappenard. You can see him there break on the grass with the left side tires. That just loses all the grip in the past the MX-5. Slight touch with the wall that will give him some damage. But mostly, that will lose him a lot of time in the battle for what well, basically was a podium position on him. Yeah, so what you're saying, though, is pretty much the biggest thing that's hurt is his pride at this point. 
Basically, basically, yeah. Well, he can still continue, fortunately for him, uh, trying to fend off Bjorn de Forge. It would be, and uh, Derek Holland, that will be for P8 overall. Now, he's still in front of those drivers, so he just has to consolidate now and hope that the drivers in front of him will make a mistake so he can catch up to them once again. Now, if you go to Kip Stevens, that's the closest battle on track. That's Maurice Wurst, Joe McDonald, and Kip Stevens. Uh, that's the battle for P12 at the moment. Kip Stevens, of course, is the quickest of them. Falling down the order after a mistake in the pit lane. He's very close now to Joe McDonald. He doesn't want to make a move in turn 12, though. As we saw uh, happen with Nicholas Berger a few laps ago. He tries to stay there, but understeers completely almost off the track because of the overspeed that he has of Joe McDonald in front of him. He's still in the draft, but because of that oversteer, he cannot make a move as Joe McDonald breaks very late trying to avoid Maurice's words. All the drivers actually outbreak themselves as they stay single foul and position stay as they were. They go around turn three and four here. Nick, Nick Thiessen and Nicholas Berger now making their way down pit road. So that's second and third on the racetrack right now. They'll shake out uh, to be uh, third and fourth here once everything is said and done after their pit stop. Still looking at Taurus. We'll see when he comes in. But I believe the only two car. I believe now Taurus is the last car that has not made his way down pit road here. Uh, Sorry, very morning. close there. Very close there, Stefan van Opsel actually gets by Nick Thiessen there, late breaking for Stefan van Opsel. That early pit stop that the Belgian made actually pays dividends. He gets by Nick Thiessen, who was leading that P3 battle all the time, burned a lot of fuel and had to stay slightly longer in the pits because of that. Stefan van Opsel gets that P3 uh, position after everything will shake out. Now in the meantime, Stefan van uh, Peter van Gogh and Nicolas Berger are close together as well, but they have lost connection to these uh, two drivers as well. So Stefan van Opstel and Nick Thiessen, they will fight it out for the final podium position here at Sukuba. Oh, look, Stefan van Opstel make a mistake. Big mistake for him as he goes to the penultimate hairpin. And that will give Nick Thiessen a lot more momentum as they go to the uh, to turn 12, the final corner. Does he have enough momentum to put it side by side? No, I don't think so. He takes a look on the inside, breaks very late, almost contact between the two Benelux drivers. Still on the inside, still on the inside, tracks out slightly. Now Stefan van Opsel maybe can use more momentum around the outside. He cannot. Nick Thiessen cuts him off. Beautiful move from him. He gets that position back, really capitalizing on the small mistake of Stefan van Opstel. Oh, and Sonic Kenshin actually uh, has jumped Domas Torres, I hear just now. Domas Torres, with yeah. his pit stop, took still for a very long time. That means that Sonny Kenshin is by him now. Now, Domas Torres, of course, was the quickest driver in practice in qualifying. So I wouldn't be surprised if he finds his way back to the rear of Sonny Kenshin. Only 2.4 seconds between the two drivers. But this will hurt Domas Torres. Of course, he has been in this position for, before this season in Donington. But this will hurt him now. As suddenly Kenshin actually seems to have slight connection troubles, blinking a little bit. Let's compare the pace of these two drivers, see if Damas Torres can close the gap. Yeah, that's uh, that's a that's a pretty significant gap for those two. It, it might be one of those situations, Johan, that uh, might have to worry about if he has enough time to do anything. Is really starting to see these laps click off. You're already running lap 31 of 43 here today. So he's only got 12 laps to be able to try to get back up there. Exactly. And it's really on pit lane that there's a lot of difference between the two drivers. Damas Astoris was 1.6 seconds slower than Sonny Kenshin. And that's really, well, the, the gap that you see with a bit on the track. Now, as this battle is shaking out, I see a lot of drivers close together following Robert Wieninga. There's a lot of drivers there in the M category as well. Robert Wieliga has been followed by Derek Holland, Jordi Fai, Kip Stevens, Maurice Wirtz, John McDonald and Jeroen Oersum all in the mix. And that is the battle for P9 overall. So the M driver is leading a whole kaggle of cars behind him. Right now, looking at that battle there, it's tight. And uh, You mentioned there that uh, we were talking, you talked about the AM championship and so your AM driver standings going into this. Of course, we talked about Steven uh, being off uh, not here today. So that's Bjorn uh, DeForge, Derek Holland, uh, Jeroen uh, Ursum, and uh, Michael Wortman all trying to gain positions and points on the leader who is not here this afternoon. So the AM championship looks to be really tight as we go into the next race, which will be here in about two weeks uh, here for the MX5 World Tour. 
Fike, Fike, Fike trying to do something here on Derek Collins. He was able to kick quite, I don't think he's quite able to complete the move there. And look at Kip Stevens behind him. He tried to take that opportunity. Will we see an overtake in the infield here? This time, no. Beautiful defensive move from Jordy Fike there. Just cutting off Kip Stevens at exactly the right moment. Kip Stevens looks very feisty, though. He's trying to recover from everything that happened early in the race, and he looks really quick compared to Jordy Fike. Now, this means that Derek Holland will have it a lot calmer. Both these drivers are fighting, and that will mean that they will disappear from his rear view mirror as they go through turn 11 at the moment. It is Kip Stevens with a good enough exit around one car leg between each other, using the draft to get closer and closer. Now, early in the race, Kip Stevens didn't want to make an overtake going into turn 12. This time around, he wants to stay behind as well. And you can see both these drivers actually closing down to Derek Holland as well on the rundown. Both of them oversteering quite a bit. And as Jordi Fike has to break, do not hit the grass. Kip Stevens gets on the inside of turn one because of that. He is on the inside, side by side, tracks out a little bit, almost contact between them. On the outside, Johnny Fike has a little bit more momentum, but it's Kip Stevens who can go earlier on the throttle. So Kip Stevens gaining one position back to P11, trying to get by Derek Holland now as soon as possible to get back in the top 10. Yeah, Derek Holland also had his own troubles there going through turn one, and that is why Jordy Fike really had to let off the gas uh, in order to avoid getting into the back of Derek Holland there. And that really cost him, as though he's really fallen off the back deck lid of uh, Kip Stevens. But Kip Stevens all over Derek Holland now. And uh, I, I, Kip Stevens, uh, despite his earlier trouble in the race, uh, definitely has a faster car, I think, than Derek Holland at this point. It's just going to be a matter of if he can get around him. It's one of those things, one of those cliches that you always talk about in racing. Catch, catching him is one thing, passing him is another. And you're seeing that right now with Derek Holland and Kip Stevens. Oh, but Derek Holland got a lot of curb there on the inside of turn 12. That will give Kip Stevens an opportunity around the outside. Will you make the move on the outside, Kip Stevens? You'll be a hero if you do that. Come on, Kip Stevens, you can keep it on the outside. He keeps it on the outside. What a beautiful move there in turn one. Great move for Kip Stevens. He gets back in the top 10 with that. What a move from him. That... That is a hard place to pass on the outside. And Kip Stevens just uh, pulled it off about as well as you possibly can. And that moves him up another spot into 10th position as you brought up. And I think Kip Stevens should be able to pull away from that now as Derek Hollins, I think, is going to have his hands full once again with Jordy Fike here before too long. Getting back up front, uh, closer to the front, uh, the battle with uh, Nicholas Berger and Peter Van Wool here has really heated up the last few laps too. Peter had a few good looks to the inside of Nicholas Berger. He's looking for a line to try to do something with him, almost to his rear deck lid that time, not quite there. It just jockey for position here in the later stages of this race. These guys next time by will be completing lap 36, so Listen here with about nine laps to go right now. And uh, you can definitely tell the action's getting up uh, tight is one and two starting to close the gap a little bit. Uh, three and four is closing the gap. And of course here for five and six starting to close the gap a little move, bit as well. Move for P3. Stefan van Opstal is on the inside of Nick Thiessen as they go through the final corner. But there's Nick Thiessen on the outside with more momentum. He can stay in front of him and swings by once again. Getting back that podium position. The battles are indeed heating up because behind it, Peter van Gogh is also taking a very uh, strong look. Now he cannot keep it side, or put it side by side with Nicolas Berger. A lot of drivers are realizing, Adam, it seems like that the time <laughs> is ticking. That if they want to win some positions, that moves have to be made now. Now, in the meantime, uh, the gap between Sonny Kenshin and Damasa Torres is slinking hard. Only a second between those two drivers. That means that Damasa Torres has won over a second in the final two, three, or in the last two, three laps. A great pace from the Spaniard. Sonny Kenshin is under a lot of pressure now because now Damasa Torres will have to draft. That will only help him more and more to close down the gap to the car in front. Meanwhile, Kip Stevens is once again on pit road. Is this just a normal pit stop to put in some fuel? I think that Kip Stevens might have on the fuel as he's putting once again tires on both sides of the race, uh, both sides of his car. This is not the race that Kip Stevens would have wanted. Look, at going back to Jordy Fike. And he's finally caught Derek Holland and was able to get around Derek Holland. So move Derek Holland now back a spot. Jordy Fike uh, 
great run. He, he's another guy that had some troubles very early on in this race. You see him making that move. <laughs> I think maybe he saw what Derek, uh, what Kip Stevens did. It's like, oh, I can go around the outside. Didn't quite work as well for him that time. But the Derek Holland really runs wide. And that's going to give Jordy Fike that position. And uh, see if he's able to pull away from Derek Holland. Or Derek Holland tries to stay in contention uh, for that ninth position now. So that's uh, one of the battles on the racetrack. Uh, once again, we're keeping tabs on all the front runners as well. As it uh, seems like the top six are just in packs of two here, running very closely. But of course, for your leader right now, Sonny Kanchin now only has eight tenths of a second to go back to Torres. Torres doing everything he can to try to get back to the lead after Kanchin leapfrogged him during the pit cycle, able to get around him. That's how he was able to get into the lead. And now it's looking to try to hang on to that lead. These two guys went in with Torres eight points ahead of Kanchin in the point standings. See what that's going to do to that gap. But Kanchin definitely looking to make some ground, not only with a race win here today, but maybe in the point standings as well, if he can hold on just another couple of laps. Yeah, the difference between these two drivers at this point of the race is just consistency. Damas Torres is the last four laps that are the last six laps actually that he did are all within one tenth of a second while Sonny Kenshin fluctuates a lot more to two three tenths of a second difference between his lap times that's really helping the Massa Torres to close down the gap you can see it visually shrinking every moment that we talk seven tenths of a second in the meantime Sonny Kenshin is pushing as hard as he can I can see him dipping a lot of wheels on the grass uh, on the exit of corners so that will not help him in the, the miles per incident chart as well. The Australian is pushing hard to stay in front, but Damas Torres is closing down more and more. Six tenths of a second now, and as they reach the back straight after the next hairpin, it will only shrink down more and more in the draft. Yeah, these two, as we've talked about before, going back to Donington just a few weeks ago, they've, they've been in this situation before, and it resulted in a win by Kanchin by only about three thousandths of a second at the line in Donington. Uh, a lot of fireworks there. Are we going to see repeat here for today? These guys pushing really hard, trying to get every little bit that they can out of their car. And I can tell you, Johan, I think right now they are very thankful that these MX-5s are uh, behaving themselves on their car on these curbs because, well, they're using every little bit that they can out there of that racetrack. Absolutely. Well, you kind of need to in these cars to, to really get everything out of your pace. You really have to use the track to its full width. But look at it. The Massa Storius has closed down to get to four tenths of a second. Now, I was looking in front of them a little bit. There's no real traffic to speak of with only four laps to go. I think this will be a fight tooth to nil with no other influences. As the Massa right Storius actually takes a little look on the inside there. That is, well, Take one for that battle. The Massa Torres took a little look at the inside. The Sonny Kenshin has more connection issues. He blinks back, fortunately for him, in P1 there. The gap between the two is less than three tenths of a second. But the Massa Torres took a little look at the inside. More blinking for Sonny Kenshin. That will not help Torres, of course. When you have to battle this close and the car in front of you is very unpredictable where he is on track. He has a good run out of the final corner. Takes a very late look on the inside. Breaks very late. Sonny Kenshin has to take a wider line. The Massa Torres now has the inside. Side by side out of the corner. The next hairpin. They touch each other. Through the twisty section. They're still side by side. Now on the inside it's Sonny Kenshin. He breaks very late. The Massa Torres tries to hang on tight around the inside. He has looked at Kip Stevens as he learned from it. He cannot make the move. And again contact between the two. Slight touch between them. And now it's Sonny Kenshin with a car length in front. Tooth and nail. We still got Two and a half laps to go here as now Torres gets another look at the inside on Kanchin. This time, I think he's going to clear him. But Kanchin's still right there driving, oh, using every little bit of racetrack that they can. Here's to go down a long back straightaway. Now using that draft at all. Sitting there pulling alongside him. they got the long sleeping turn 12 right here next up. As, ooh, Torres slides a little bit. Kanchin tries to stay out of the back end of him. Able to do so. They both stay straight, but not able to use that runoff there on turn 12 to either's advantage. They're both right there. Torres takes the defensive line going into turn one. They touch a little bit again. Is 
Torres is able to swing out there. Canch in hand to give up that spot to avoid wrecking the both of them there. Go through the twisty section. This is where they were side by side the last time by. Not so much this time. Canch now in the position where he has to chase Torres. Torres pulls away ever so slightly, but all it's going to take is one mistake. And Canch going to be right back there, Johan. Yeah, and I, I just want to put a little bit of admiration for a beautiful overtaking maneuver for Torres there. He just completely slid up fr uh, in front of Sonny Kench there in the final corner. Of course, he got past in the, uh, in the hairpin before that, but he really finished the deal in the final corner. And the way he approached that was magnificent. Great overtaking maneuver from him. Now, Sonny Kench will have one more lap to go. That basically means two opportunities. The first one will be here in turn one. He needs a good run out of turn 12. He has a good run. He closes the gap down a little bit, but it's too too much distance between himself and the Spaniard under braking. You can see that he tries to take a slightly different line, slightly wider line, but on exit. He just understeers out of the corner. You can see that Jaume just can go earlier in the throttle and wins that car back, uh, car length back immediately. And now this is a part where Torres, if he makes any kind of mistake at all, Sonny Kanchen will be right there, but he is laser focused, he is locked in. He is just trying to finish the back half of this lap. Sonny Kanchen might be too far back now unless there is some sort of mistake made. But he is driving just as hard as well, trying to get every little bit of an advantage that he can. We'll see here as they start heading down the back straightaway. This is going to be the last opportunity. They're coming down to turn 12. Taurus is going to have the line. Kanchen not gaining fast enough. Torres able to go all the way down the inside. He's going to be able to swing all the way to the outside. Torres coming down to the stripe. He is going to get himself the win here at Tsukuba. Sonny Kanchen comes home in second position. We can go ahead and go back to third. We've got a little while before they're going to come across the line. They're coming through turn 12 now. Nick Deason has been able to hold off Stephen Upstall here. Nick Deason is going to be able to come home, take in that podium position, the last spot on the podium here for today. And then going back to Nicholas Berger and Stephen Hool here. Oh, they actually came across side by side. Nicholas Berger is going to be able to get in the position there, while Peter Van Boel is going to be able to won't be the one that comes home with the top amateur finish here for today. Waiting for the guys to finish coming across the line. Uh, here comes uh, Robert Minga. Looking at another side-by-side -side battle here. That's McWurtz and McDonald. And it looks like it's going to be Wurtz. Or uh, Wurtz, excuse me, that's going to be able to come across and take that 11th position. 12th is going to go to Joe McDonald. All right, so that's going to wrap us up here today, at least as far as the racing's action is concerned. But when we come back here in a few minutes on the post-race show, we'll take a look at those final standings and tell you exactly how things are going to look here as we head into the next race. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the Heusenfeld Wrap-Up Show, streaming your way on the Global Sim Race channel via the iRacing Esports Network. Heusenfeld Solutions, currently being used by countless professional teams and drivers, is now within budgetary reach, all without having to compromise on realism or engineering value. They offer advanced vehicle software and hardware, able to simulate any combination of race car and track. Be a better race car driver and get in touch today at hoiskenfeld.com. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at those final standings here. And what a race there at the end. Uh, Torres coming out on top here for today over top of Kanchen. Their, their second 1-2 finish here for this season. And once again, came down to rubbing some fenders out there. But wow, what a race out there. Nick Thiessen and Steven Upstall will be able to come home in second, or excuse me, third and fourth in their own great battle and Berger and Ghoul able to come in with their own great battle as well for fifth and sixth. There was lots of great battles all over the place out there today, Johan. Seventh position is Bjorn uh, DeForge. Eighth, Robert uh, Vienka and Jordy Fike in ninth and Derek Holland in tenth position out there for today. Yeah, Maurice Wirtz and Joe McDonald continue the Noah's Ark tradition by finishing side by side. They are classified in P11 and P12 and there's a few drivers that had misfortune today. Jean-Frappe Pernat had to make a very long second pit stop. Uh, he is classified to P13. Jeroen Oersum had a spin few laps before the end. Michael Wardman fell down the order as well. Kip Stevens had to make several pit stops during the race, classified in P16. And Christoph Sanchez was our only retiree after contact with Sonny Kench in lap one. Well, at this point, I mean, it definitely seems like we're going to have a shakeup in the point standings as we head into the next race, which it's going to be at the Nürburgring. Uh, they'll be running on the Grand Prix circuit there here in about two weeks. So, uh, definitely looking like that's going to be interesting. And another bigger track out there as well. And we'll see if the Torres and uh, Kenshin show is going to continue on for another round. Once again, that's going to be in two weeks. Hey, we'd like to thank everyone at the Quality Racing Syndicate for organizing the series and contracting with GSRC to broadcast it. Thanks to the sponsors today, SimSportNews.com and Hoiskenveld. On screen now are just some of the equipment and software used to stream cyberspace to your place. The original music comes from Eric Ekholm and June Lalonde. See the screen for how to contact each of them. As we were talking about, the MX-5 World Tour is going to continue in two weeks for round five from the Nürburgring Grand Prix Strict. GSRC via IESN will be there to bring you all the action. We hope you join us. The next IESN broadcast, hey, get up early. If you're, depending on what part of the world you're in, hey, if you're in the U.S., stay up late. That's going to be the Virtual Racing School V8, uh, the V8 Supercar Series, round two from Interlago. Sim Speed's going to bring you the action starting at 2 a.m. Eastern time here tonight. Sliding across your screen now are some of the upcoming GSRC broadcasts. So check those out and mark them down your calendar. If you'd like more information about GSRC, visit GlobalSimRacingChannel.com or check us out on social media at Twitter at GSR Channel. Facebook at slash Global Slim Racing Channel and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. Also, if you haven't done so yet, become a YouTube subscriber by heading over to our YouTube page and hitting the big red button. Finally, on behalf of the entire crew, Johan, Joe, Dougie, I'd like to thank you all for watching us here for today as Torres gets a fantastic win here at Scuba. With that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard. We'll see you on the track.